Hey, trucked up guys and gals, as you know, I weaved my way across British Columbia on my inaugural province-wide trucked up stop tour. But there was even a bigger end goal to this trip. My ultimate destination was to arrive here in Port Moody, British Columbia, Greater Vancouver, down by the water, one of the most beautiful parts of the West Coast, for a very special Canadian reveal. One of the first Silverado EVs in the driveways of retail customers, and I'm thrilled that one of these fortunate and awesome individuals graciously invited me to have an exclusive first-hand introduction to his 2024 Silverado. Colorado EV 4WT. That's right. The very one, the truck trim, GM told us originally was not available other than for fleet purchases. Well, we're actually sitting inside this amazing truck as I film this. Welcome to the Silverado 4WT. Let's get trucked up. You love trucks, all trucks. You haul and tow, snow wheel and off-road. Take the kiddies to softball practice and your sweetie to lover's lookout. Mm. This channel is all about how the truck is changing, but not the lifestyle. We're loaded up, kitted out, and ready to roam. That's a fact. But are we ready for the future? Welcome to Trucked Up EVs. We are going to dive into all the cool stuff about it. But first, the most important story of all. How did this guy get his hands on one of these things? Is there something deeper and darker going on here? So we need something big. Not like my finances are a concern or anything. It's not like I'm I'm struggling on YouTube or anything. I'm living on croutons and ketchup, man. I'm starving, can't you see? Something epic like how many covert and clandestine missions into the secret HQ of GM with the world's best operatives did it take to get this thing over the border and into the hands of an EV truck-seeking mastermind? I just bought it from a dealer, dude. <laughs> it's, I just said bought it dealer. I'm doomed! Now, on a serious note, this is Mike who is one generous man who has bagged one of the very first Silverado EVs in the country. Mike, welcome to Trucked Up EVs, man. Oh, thank you for having me oh, on your channel. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. And thanks for having me in the house. I got my own little personal Airbnb suite. Hey, what and, do Trucked Up guys do? Well, it's for free, right? Mm -hmm. I know everyone's just dying to know how this 4WT ended up in your driveway. Oh, well, like many people, I had a Cybertruck order for a long time and um, wasn't hearing anything and I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> and uh, I was watching lots of YouTube videos about the Cybertruck yeah. and I was getting kind of tired of them. Yeah. And then I saw this one with the Ford Lightning. Thought, okay, let's look. Well, that was mine? That was your video, oh, 20, right. 20 things I like about the Ford Lightning. As I watched it, he mentioned something about BC Hydro and I realized this guy's in Canada and BC and he has a he has one of these trucks. They're actually available. And I almost went, put my shoes on and went down to the dealership. <laughs> and then I thought, you know what? I'll wait for my wife because she's a good negotiator. She's such a good negotiator. I'm willing to have her along on the test drive. No, it's slowing me down. Well, she's a speed freak like you, right? Uh, no, not at all. So then you had this Lightning. I mean, you'd gone from the cyber truck over the lightning you enjoyed the drive we went for this test drive and uh he said turn right on this and we'll go up this hill up the side of a mountain oh yeah and i turn around that hill and i just oh man i launched it and i've got oh this is awesome yeah uphill uphill and yeah yeah just like crazy and then we came back to the dealership there was something i don't know we just kind of left it there was something I, I liked it i didn't love it as my wife said and you were also you'd done so much research on things you knew about the new heat pump in the 24s and you were driving a 23 right that's right yeah. so you would instantly become more picky because yeah, you could get more the, stuff i was asking the salesman about it and he was he was looking stuff up on his phone in the back seat while i was driving you <laughs> so know. you knew more than him most likely no pretty much yeah. yes so then suddenly you've got this position where you're happy with it liking it but it's not like sparking you to just i'm getting one of these well that was it and then i so i started doing some research yeah and then i realized that i found out about the Silverado EV. So I watched the YouTube about that and I go, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. And I watched the, but the first one I watched was the RST with the with the, the mid gate and yeah. the four wheel steering, all the Cybertruck oh, yeah. stuff. And I'm like, oh wow, this is expensive, but it's really not much more expensive than the Cybertruck. Cyber yeah. So the next day I went online and got a hold of my GM dealer. I said, what's the story? And 
I went down there and they said the Silverados are all spoken for, but we have a, or the RSTs, but we do have a couple of the uh, work trucks coming in. Yeah. Would you be interested in that? And I'd seen the work truck and I thought, okay. I didn't realize how much difference there was between the two. She says, all we have left coming in, there's a 3WT and there's a 4WT. The 3WT is black and the 4WT is white. Mm. And I really wanted the the black one, but I'm going to, you're going to have to put me down for that white one. And a big thing of why you wanted this truck too, is you want to really tow. I mean, the big attraction for you with the Silverado over the Lightning was you could tow a Well, good that distance. was after I test drove the Lightning. I actually went on my search on YouTube, put RV and an EV, EV. and there was nothing out there. Cause yeah, because no one's no, doing it. <laughs> nobody's doing it because you can't do it. That's right. It's either nobody's thought of it or it just can't be done. And the few yeah. that I did find basically said, you're going to go about 120 miles or and right. you're going to have to stop and charge somewhere. Yeah. And I'm going, okay, that's not, that's not, not going to happen. It. Yeah. And then when I found out how much range and towing capability the, or the, the work truck had. Yeah. And it was actually better than the RST and priced much better. So I was happy for this to show up. She, yep. she told me it was going to be four to six months. And then in the meantime, my, my old Dodge truck, I'm going, well, I'm going to have to get one last oil change on it because mm. who knows how long it's going to be months still mm -hmm. and while i was out there getting an oil change the, the salesman there said oh we're coming out with an electric truck too so i gave my information at dodge dodge yep. thinking yep. hey why yeah, not why whoever, not? Who whoever who gets to be first might even be elon line, probably not line them <laughs> up folks yeah i was out we actually went out and bought my wife a tesla a week later i was driving the tesla and i got a phone call from this guy and he says, oh yeah, it's the sales guy from Dodge. He says, I don't work at Dodge anymore. He says, I'm working at the Chevrolet. And he said, did you know they have an EV truck and there's one in the showroom right now? And I was like, we were down there first thing in the morning. I just wanted to see the actual truck and yeah. see what it was like and yep. climb into it. And they were looking around for the keys everywhere. And it had just been brought in. And then the salesperson there, he said, well, he says, give me a day he says i'll try and find you a black one so we went home we were going to go out and look at other dealerships but i thought no that's fine we'll go home and then the next day when i phoned him he said uh no your truck is coming in good news is your truck is coming in on the first week of august but we couldn't find a black one i was okay yeah just waited out yeah and then it was the last game of the stanley cup so i watched that and afterwards i just went online and there was do it on marine and they said that they had a black one. So I, I sent a text message saying, do you have a black 4WT? And I got a response back at 10 o'clock at night saying, do you want to test drive it? Ho! Oh! My wife had already gone to bed and I didn't want to wake her up, but I was lying in bed buzzing like I just... <laughs> like I'm a little just, kid before Christmas. Yeah, and we kind of arranged for me to go down there like 12.30 in the afternoon and I'm going, no, I'm not no, doing that. I'm going down no, there. I'm, I'm, I'll be there when the door's open. I'm under the Christmas tree. I'm opening the presents early. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good, good yeah. analogy. And it was probably the easiest sale the guy ever had. <laughs> I'm going, well, I'm, I'm through. I have no negotiating here. I'm going down and I'm paying whatever they say it's worth. Which is kind of amazing because if you go to the GM sites, if you go everywhere with these vehicles, they're saying they're not available in Canada. They're saying that you can't get one. And yet we do have them around. And what we're seeing is most of those have been brought up for demos for so people can sit in them, so people can experience them. People can take them out for test drives. But you got lucky because they sold it to you. Congratulations, that's awesome. But you know, the reality is, ah, I think I've got the superior truck. You know, why don't we just go out and take a look at how your truck really measures up to the fine Ford craftsmanship that I'm currently driving. Huh? Huh? You're on, dude. And what better place to have a mono mono between these two trucks than in a place that kind of represents the old and the new, the traditional and the new age that we see coming. We're in Ioko, right here in Port Moody, and it's an old oil refinery and a ghost town. This place basically shut down a couple decades ago, and we've got a refinery row that's no longer here. A lot of traditional Things that ran for decades are now coming to an end and replaced with something new. Is that what's happening here? Well, to some degree, and we're gonna show you the changes between these two trucks, but we're also gonna duke it out, see which one actually is measuring up. I gotta ask, why would you choose this newfangled, uh, aerodynamically sleek EV truck over this amazing, tried and true, proven F-150 Lightning? Now this truck here, with a small, I mean, standard battery. How far does it go? You know, this is that EPA rating thing, but 
you know, it's blowing the doors off of that. My whole trip across BC, I was averaging around 420 to 430 kilometers on a charge. That's pretty darn good for a standard battery. Well, mine actually has 734 kilometers of range. In fact, your little trip you just took, I could have driven to Alberta. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so you get 734 to my 400, double. That's a little thing, okay, that's nothing. Because I, I, if I wanted to, I could, uh, I could get the uh, Flash, the, the cheapest version of this, uh, this truck in extended range. It can do uh, uh, less, it can do less. Yeah, 515 kilometers. Okay, with well, this, hold on, hold on. You got like double the batteries in this thing. This thing is gonna cost you a fortune there's a reason you put that many batteries in it i mean this is a rich man's truck okay this is a working man's truck this is affordable okay so uh so tell me how much does this suck out of your wallet well batteries are the most expensive part of one of these so a big battery would be expensive but this is the same battery as a hummer which costs one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and this was only eighty five thousand canadian so half as much as the hummer and the same price is the flash that doesn't go as far I, i'm gonna be back i just gotta i gotta check my notes okay okay no i okay okay i got it. i got it this thing is a brick it's more aerodynamic it's got less coefficient drag than this but it's a brick in weight how much did this uh big behemoth whale weigh oh it's like 8600 pounds but it's efficiently used. In fact, it weighs slightly less than the Hummer, but it gets 200 more kilometers. Okay, okay, I'll give it to you. Thing is, with it being so heavy, this thing can't off-road worth crap, because I've seen YouTube videos on it before. If you want to watch them, down here in the description, even Kyle Connor on Outer Spec, they dragged these things out, and this thing couldn't get up a hill. Why? No locking differential, too heavy, and no off-road settings at all. Ha! Yeah, it's not a Jeep, but I want something that'll tow me across Canada and back through the United States and maybe even down to Mexico without spending hundreds of dollars a day on gas or diesel. And this fits the bill. You know, technically I still got one. Even though you don't want to use it for that, I still got one for the general purpose end of these two trucks. Okay, it's like four to one already, but I got one. And we're actually going to look at some of the differences underneath these two trucks. You know, when I'm down underneath this thing, what I can't believe is all the armor plating underneath. What Ford did I, is there's this big huge chunk of one eighth inch iron that goes over both of the engines, the two electric motors, and then down the entire skateboard of the battery pack. But what's more is there's a big huge space between that armor plating and the battery pack itself. So now I've got a gap. So if something does smash into that big armor plating, it's got a whole section of gap before it even gets to the battery pack. But here's the crazy thing. If you take a look down on the other end, you can actually see the battery pack. And when you look at the battery pack, it's encased in a big chunk of steel. The whole battery pack is also armor plated. So Ford did think about off-roading when they designed this thing and they over-engineered it to get rid of people's fear, uncertainty and doubt because of all the Fudsters. Now the Silverado EV isn't that shabby at all either. In fact, I'm kind of impressed. Silverado, the guys over at GM and Chevy here did a pretty good job. You can see underneath and even hear it. That's a big freaking plate. But it doesn't have the gap and it's just got a couple of the little S uh, kind of corrugated curls inside that plate and then there's just the straight battery pack. So definitely not as protected. Sure is safe for general use though. You don't have to worry about it at all. They've done a good job. But it's not your off-road capable kind of look underneath you. Now, I found number two, this is the frunk. And I got junk in my frunk. I gotta put that over here. Okay, I'll take out my launches. I'm gonna, I like to sit down a lot because I'm overweight and I, my back starts to hurt. But I can't open it, so we won't do that. And then I, I mean, for enemies. No, that's just my sledgehammer. And then this is my survival pack. I got my, my, my kit. Uh, tools. You never go anywhere without tools. You never know when there'll be an emergency. So, and then I got this stuff over here. And then I got into my blow up pillow. <laughs> and then uh, my yoga. And a, and a sticker. And just to make my point, my frunk was only half full. Oh yeah! And now, the ultimate test. 
Let's see how much we can get into this baby. Hey, hey, put the spinning guy in there. Here, that's like, I don't know what a fork, put it uh, that guy there. I'm gonna put this in here. Oh, man. Put this up here, up there. shit it fit okay so it all fit but in actuality this front is a lot bigger than this front as you can see this one's full this one was about three quarters full it holds 400 liters this one i'll get the number for you and post it below but it's less it also has a little bit more height to it so you can fit more volume going up and out to the sides. You can see here just the narrow end of this one compared to this one. But either way, they're impressive. There's one benefit, however, to the F-150, and that is I can lift it when I'm carrying all the crap, and I can close it when I'm carrying all the crap. This one doesn't have that. And if I want to open it now, I can't. I can't unless I have that man's key fob. This one, I can open with a simple push of a button. The 400 liters that is inside the F-150 doesn't include its extra compartment right here. So I've still got a whole bunch of crap. And you can see right on the back of this, it says 400 liters, 400 pounds. How much can you fit inside this thing? Well, we're gonna find out the hard way, the trucked up way, like real man test equipment. We can do this. Woo, okay, here we go. Okay, just help me out here a bit, okay, Mike? I think I just gotta get in. No, okay, I think I gotta tell you, you gotta put your leg down, put your leg down. Oh, that's not my foot, we got it. back, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think we got it. Come on. I think something just popped. Time to prove the point of the second best thing about a superior lightning. This is stupid. Why am I doing this? Because I'm a moron and I have too big of an ego. I don't know what my problem is. I just can't let things go. Oh, it's uh, getting dark. It, it's a little humid in here. Oh, and I don't think I changed my socks this morning. I got you. I got you. I told you. Definitely better than your e-trunk. Well, that's pretty good. I guess if you can't tow much of a trailer, at least you got somewhere to sleep. <laughs> this one's gonna be no contest at all. I already know who the winner is before we begin, but it's very cool and we gotta show it off anyway. So this is, like I said, the traditional truck. It's funny that it's only been two years on the market and it's already outdated in a lot of ways to what's rolling out over here. And what are we seeing? Well, this maximum is 155 kilowatt charging speed, which was considered awesome when this rolled off the lot. But now we're talking about, not only do we have a massive battery pack, but how fast can you charge that pack up? And we're gonna find out right now. Holy smokes, according to the stats, this thing can charge at 350 kilowatts. And another reality is we've almost got none of these in Canada. We had to drive quite a distance to get to these two here in Vancouver. They're around though, and they're coming. There's gonna be more and more 350 kilowatt super what they call hyper charging systems when we see those ubiquitous across canada and united states that changes the whole playing field and also forces the evs to catch up with the technology which is exactly what we want to see already we've had a flop because the f-150 lightning at a hypercharger at 350 kilowatts keeps erroring at this faults it does not want to charge on something this powerful even though it says up to 350 kilowatts, it says, I don't want to do it on this system. It was at 277, now it's dropped. We're gonna watch that speed and see what happens to it. I'm gonna go try to deal with my dinosaur F-150 and see if it can actually charge at one of these. And then lo and behold, for no reason whatsoever, it went from a red light to a blue light. It decided, yeah, okay, we'll do it. And what do we add over here? Oh my goodness, hey, I'm, I'm coming up on them. I'm at 163, which is very cool. 
being that my vehicle is only supposed to charge at 155. Let's find out what happens here, folks. It's a neck and neck race. I cannot believe it. My little lightning's trying so hard. 7% of my battery's been filled in two minutes. I'm now at 165 kilowatts, which is amazing for this vehicle. Well, well, well. He's holding steady at 181. So he is definitely getting more power out. But remember, he's got that massive battery pack underneath that's over twice the size of mine. The setback, and it's not a big one. He's been here six minutes. He's put in 20, almost 22 kilowatt hours. It's already inside his system. He's gone from 26 to 36% in only six minutes. But think about that. 734 kilometers, he would need to go 100%. And he's gonna go to the 80% mark at the charger. That's what it's set for. So he's got 33 minutes left to get there. So that's a bit of a wait. But then again, you won't need to fill up again for a really long trip. And remember, towing with this thing, he's still gonna do over 300 miles or 500 kilometers. That is insane. Well over double what my truck would do. And he's starting to slow down. Oh my goodness, the lightning has slowed, but just to its maximum capacity of its batteries. So this thing was kicking at an insane rate. So thank you Ford, they've obviously done something with over the air update that's allowing me to charge at a slightly faster rate because I'm just at the very top end of what my batteries are supposed to handle. I'm well close to 60% in not even, not even close to 10 minutes of charging speed yet. So my buddy Mike and I, we just realized neither of us preconditioned our trucks because we're a bunch of old farts, but we just don't like all the buttons. We don't, we don't like buttons. But you know what? That's still really impressive. Without preconditioning either one, we're doing really, really well. But I think with the Silverado, it's necessary to precondition because that's a big battery pack. I'll bet he would go up by at least 50 to 100 kilowatts if the battery was preconditioned. And it's only because I'm almost winning this contest that I'm saying that. I was really showing off a little bit there thinking, ha, 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 my little old lightning's kicking some Silverado butt. But I'm not. Mine's starting to slow down a little bit. It's starting to get a little warm. And when they get warm, they've got great thermal management system in these trucks. You know, you've got your little cell phone that you're hanging on to, and there's all kinds of thermal management because you got lithium ion batteries in those and in your laptops and everything else. But what's done inside these trucks is absolutely stellar. We're pumping in eight and it's a huge amount of electrons and they're handling it. But mine, unfortunately, is starting to slow down. I'm at 123. So it's starting to cool off, but I just hit the 10 minute mark and I'm up to 63%. So I'm gonna get to 80% if I hold steady at this number in about, oh, 15, 20 minutes max. This vehicle uh, that you bought, Mike, if you take a look from the outside, it's not just brute force batteries. I mean, that's what we hear about. Yes, there's tons of batteries in this thing, but for the price, what you're getting with not just the towing, and the range and the capabilities of the truck, you're getting something that's tried to be as efficient with that big pile of batteries. The design outside, the aerodynamics of this truck are pretty amazing. And when we were looking at the wheel wells and seeing how they created airflow lines to allow the air to flow over rather than creating eddies, how they worked off the back similar to the avalanche to create those little wings on the, uh, on the bed and all about aerodynamics from start to finish on this vehicle. It's just, it's just fantastic. So if they hadn't done that, if they'd built an F-150 Lightning-esque truck, or if they would have built something like their Hummer, case in point, brick with wheels, and it shows in what it can do for mileage because nobody gives a crap who owns a, a Hummer EV. So you get every single benefit out of every electron that you put into that massive battery pack. That's pretty cool. I think you totally scored, man. I'm happy with it. Woohoo! Thank you for everything you've done and to come out and get a chance to film this and to be part of a piece of Canadian history, man. Like this is a turning point for EV trucks in, in this country. Let's so hope I, so. I, yeah, let's hope so. So final thoughts, like what are your thoughts on your truck? Yeah. Um, I love my truck. Yeah. Your truck is very nice too. Um, I still kind of, it's the range over everything. I 
come to this conclusion. I don't need the cyber truck with all the fancy stuff. Yep. I need the stuff that I need something that'll get stuff done. And this yep. does everything I need it to do. Yeah. And it's so I was a truck driver for years, so very familiar environment. In, and, and it, I'm just totally at home in it. That's a key point. It's about use case. If you're using as 85% of truck owners use a truck, they're commuting with it. They're only driving 40, 50 kilometers a day. They charge at home. They never need the range. But like you, this is a perfect use case truck. Well, Same. I need a truck to tow my boat. There's no other truck that's electrified, fully electrified, available anywhere in North America that can do that well other than this truck. And now you've got me curious. I am now EV uh, Silverado curious. So I still have my order in for my RST. I think I might move it over to the trail boss, which means waiting longer, but we'll see how things unfold. Mm -hmm. But in any case, man, it's been a joy to have you on Trucked Up EVs, and I feel I got a new friend. I will do anything for a free t-shirt. I'm gonna keep that.